So a different uh, video today. <clears throat> it is about posture, but it's also about losing weight. A lot of you uh, watching my earlier videos have noticed I was we'll add the dad bod going on the belly. Actually, I think I found a picture here. There you go. Visualize. Um, and I've lost about 20 pounds now. And I didn't change what I was eating because I was always active and you can tell I got like the skinny arms it's just kind of concentrates in in the belly region and and there's a good uh, posture reason for that I'm gonna get into that um, right now while I wait for my dinner to show up and by show up I mean cook it but I haven't really changed what I eat I've always active and I always avoid you know like the carbohydrates like my mother says the what do they call what does she call it the uh, uh, pointless carbs is the point like your white bread or anything that's highly processed and your body has trouble breaking that down but then I, a lot of people have the same issues as me as i see because they pretty much will say that they're eating food straight out of their garden you know like raw kale they're getting the good enzymes out of it but they're still um you know have that that swelling in the abdomen and they're not losing their weight they're like i don't know what i'm doing wrong i'm walking all these miles i'm eating as healthy as i can what is the issue? And it might be muscle imbalance and it might be your posture. And I'm sure a lot of you have watched like the squatty potty videos and that's the right idea, but that's not going to solve your problems right away. Yes, it is better to eliminate your bowels in that sitting position, but the problem is more than that is that we just don't squat enough and we don't train our muscles to eliminate the bowel. So we don't have enough balanced muscles um, when we when we go to eliminate so throughout the day doing that actually gets things moving helps things when you're sitting you're stagnant and your pelvis is tilted and, and you know posteriorly with the, with the tight hamstrings that we all developed in our culture from sitting or standing with our hips swayed forward um that's just yeah, our bowels just aren't ready and then um there's a picture here um this is from mercola and he's got a little He's got a little blurb about this too. If you want to check it out, you go on Mercola's website about, um, it's about gut health. And yeah, it's a big issue in this country. Um, IBS and all that, diverticulitis. And it could come back to just not being able to eliminate things well. Because when it's, you know, it's backed up and it sits in there, that's when putrefaction starts. And that's your gas. And then, because uh, you, uh, you absorb heavily in your large intestine, you're going to absorb all your nutrients from the large intestine. So if there's all this gas and the, the mucosal layer is getting broken down because of that and there's bad, you know, in, you know, bad flora, bad bacteria, you can't break stuff down, you can't absorb things, you're not gonna get the good nutrition and you're gonna just be backed up. So it doesn't matter the quality of the food anymore. I mean, it does matter, it's good to have good food. I'm not saying you can, if you do squats, you can eat pizza, but, <laughs> Um, eliminating is very important so you might want to start moving more into to deeper squat exercises um, throughout the day and even when you do the, go to the bathroom get something like a squatty potty I know it's very uncomfortable but that's definitely helping me and losing a lot of my weight I feel and I'll, I'll go into a few other nutritional reasons it's not a nutrition channel it's a posture channel but I will mention a few things at the end here and how many people are losing their appendix? Look at that right there, you know, right where the large intestine starts. You got the ileocecal valve. And the one big muscle they always talk about is the pubic rectalis muscle, which actually relaxes a little bit when you're in that deeper squatting position. And even like right now, I'm not actually in a chair, I'm on my knees, which allows me, it's almost like a squat, and that, that can help get things moving. You don't notice when you do these exercises, sometimes like, oh, yeah. I have to go to the bathroom now it's like, or when I sit that way or when I sit on the couch I won't get that but as soon as I start you know going into a kneeling position or trying to sit in a squatting position you'll notice that or even doing like jump rope or something like that it gets things moving and the, the body needs that um, otherwise um, the gut's not healthy enough to um, get the right nutrients and break things down so you get a very irritated colon and and lots of other diseases cancer IBS can come from that as well not just excessive weight gain but it does start with the weight gain and if you got the belly 
and got the skinny arms, maybe you're in my boat and maybe you can learn from this. Um, a couple other things. Oh, yes. There we go. Here's a picture of the deep squat. Um, it's a flat-footed squat, so not on your toes. Uh, this is the posture pack that I'm working on, and I'll probably put some sort of online version on here eventually. <clears throat> but you can see how the knees and the weight is shifted back, almost like you would be in the eliminating position. That's the idea you want, even if you're not. Like you're going to go sit in a chair, and then you go deeper. And try to rest there for a minute, and then change the width of your feet. Be in close, and then go a little wider. And try it. Go, you're not going to get it right away. It's going to be hard. You're going to feel off balance. You're uncomfortable. Just work at it. You'll get deeper. You'll get better at it. I promise. You can do a couple reps. Go down slow. Go back up. Work through that. Try to keep the knees behind the toes. And it's okay if you go a little bit past when you get that deep. Uh, you can see I'm slightly shifted forward here, but that's the idea. Um, when you're first starting, you want to move the hips back first. That's the key. Engage the hips, number one here. Get those hips moving back and then lower straight down. You'll notice if the knees are past your toes, that's when your pelvis is tucking in and you're going forward. And that's what you want to avoid. You want to get the butt back behind you. And that's going to help reverse what you see here. This is a lot of the postures I see is this forward pelvic sway, um, the very tight hamstrings. Rounded back, forward head. So we're not just talking about all your arthritis now and all your muscle imbalance, but it can also affect your gut health. Oh, what I was going to say before is um, your, you have a, a nervous system here called the enteric nervous system, which is your immune system. And 75% of that is in the gut. So people, like an example, everyone gl blames the gluten. So the gluten comes in here. <clears throat> And what happens is the mucosal layer is so broken down because of all this irritation and gas that that gluten protein is able to move through into the muscular layer of the intestine. It's like it's lodged in there. And your immune system then, because your immune system does not exist inside the intestine itself. It's on the, <clears throat> on the outside. So it's able then to attack it because it, it's a foreign invader to it. It shouldn't be there where it is. Like a lot of people, when, if they get shot, in the, in the gut, they say they're going to die pretty quickly because that's a ton of bacteria <clears throat> just moving into the body. So <clears throat> your immune system reacts right away to that, and that creates, but it's also attacking uh, the mus your muscle as well because it has to attack where that protein is embedded into. So that's where you get your <clears throat> inflammation and your irritation. So is it the gluten's fault, or is it that you're just not eliminating as well as you should be? Now, there are people who are indeed have a wheat allergy, uh, but for most of us, it's just that irritation. Like for me, it was always an irritation. And yeah, I'll get other things besides that. Like sometimes I get the flaky skin on my hands or the itching. And, and that, I think that's more due to just an intolerance just because my gut is unhealthy. If I had a, a healthy gut, I could probably handle that gluten better. But usually what we see is with the gluten, it's not so great for you anyways because it's usually in the processed foods we're eating. But <clears throat> like if you eat something like Ezekiel bread or like bread that with, with, that's very whole grain and healthy for you, uh, like the homemade stuff, um, I won't react to it nearly as much. So it's more that it's processed garbage than that there's gluten in it. So don't blame the gluten. You know, there's people like eating gluten-free Oreos and they're like, oh, they're good for me because they're gluten-free. Like a lot of that, it's corn. A lot of that, it's genetically modified corn. And I, mean, I don't care what you think about genetically modified or not. That's, that's a whole other soapbox. We won't get into that. <clears throat> I tend to try to eat things that are raw from the earth. And yeah, we'll, we'll get into that now because I'm pretty much doing the deep squat, throwing it more into your more in your morning routine. Do maybe even do some, <clears throat> you know, put some barbell squats in there as well if you're into the gym stuff. But if not, just do body weight squats, get deeper, and that really helped me. It took me a long time to get better at it, and now I can do a minute or more, just flat foot, and it's actually more comfortable. A lot of cultures they'll they'll stay in that deep squat and they're fine with it. They'll they'll be there for a while, you know. He could be like the you know the catcher in baseball. He's down there a couple hours, so I bet he's got great gut health.
maybe they should do a, a research study on baseball catchers. I don't know. A lot of them on, are on their toes, though, so I don't know. Um, what else did I do? Um, one thing is, it, well, with a lot of the fat there that's built up in the stomach, you want to um, go into ketosis, and that's when you're burning the fat. So your body has moved from burning carbohydrates into moving fat. So in our culture, we have the three meal thing going on. So your body gets hungry after it's done burning the carbs. It's like, hey, need more carbs. So it's not really worrying about the fat because the fat's a little harder for it to break down because it's formed in it as triglycerides. There's this whole process. You got the Krebs cycle involved. So it's easier for it to just take the carbs, turn into sugar, glucose, and burn that. But um, so if we, a, 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 skipping a meal, doing more like a two meal or a one meal a day gives your body first a, a longer time to break it down. So if you were like me, where you had a lot of this backup because you weren't eliminating anything, well, years and years of garbage just built up in the stomach. You know, you don't have the metabolism you did when you were a kid, um, partly because you know, for me, I spent a lot of time sitting in college, learning all this garbage. <laughs> so that uh, garbage in, you know, you're not, garbage out you're not you're not eliminating it well so giving your body um a better a longer time to break that food down and and absorb it as best you can and then eliminate it before you add new food in is good so if i'm just doing lunch and then doing dinner and then i give my body skip breakfast i get all night and then i get all morning and on certain days i'll do one meal a day so you're getting even longer time for your body to break that down so there's two areas there. So uh, moving on from that, giving your body longer time to break things down. Um, you all, then, then you can introduce better foods in as well. And you want live foods to help build your flora back. So you want, you know, like kale and spinach to, you know, to, to allow your flora to rebuild. But first you got to eliminate it. So you might even need a longer fasting period. The squats might not do it for you. <laughs> Uh, but and you're not looking at a quick cure, but it will take time to rebuild this back. But definitely um, looking, it's not just squats, um, any like hip motion or movement will help. But definitely the deep squat is something I was lacking, it was something I was hard, and now I'm more comfortable with it. And definitely the change in the weight. That's about all I changed skipping a meal and deep squats lost 20 pounds less than a year.